Okay, here we are. Advent of Code 2021, day number four. If you don't know what's all about, check the description. I'm not going to waste your time, but I do want to mention two things. One, it looks like we're getting a little undersea scene developing here in the SDR on the left. And number two, if these videos start to run long, YouTube has a feature that lets you watch videos at higher speed, 1.5x, 2x speed. That may provide a better viewing experience. Uh, it's up to you. I'm not going to make that decision for you. Let's get started. Day four. Here we go. Giant squid. Oh, yeah. You've already lost. Oh, you're already almost one and a half kilometers below the surface of the ocean. Already so deep you can't see any sunlight. What you can see is the giant squid. Maybe it's time to play bingo. What? Oh, it wants to play bingo. Yes, I know how to play bingo. Uh, bingo is played in a set of boards. Yep, five by five. Numbers are chosen at random. The chosen number is marked on the board. Yep. Numbers may not appear on all boards. That's true. All numbers in any way, row or column board, are marked on the board. Yep, I know how to play bingo. The submarine has a bingo subsystem to help passengers pass the time. It automatically generates a random order in which to draw numbers and a random set of boards, your input. Ah, okay, so the input is going to have the, the numbers drawn and the boards. Okay, after the first five numbers are drawn, there are no winners, but the boards are marked as follows. Oh, these, right. There, there could be a winner as soon, theoretically, as soon as the fifth number is drawn if there's a board with just a perfect, you know, perfect luck, right? Seven, four, nine, five. So it was seven, four, right? But yeah. After the next six numbers are drawn, there are still no winners. And finally, a 24 is drawn. At this point, the third board wins. Yep. Uh, it has at least one complete row or column of marked numbers. In this case, the entire top row is marked. The score of the winning board can now be calculated. Start by find ah, so we have we first have to find the winning board, which is the board that completes a row, column, or diagonal. You know, first, uh, and then. Once we found that board, we calculate its score. The score of the winning board is the sum of all the unmarked numbers on that board. In that case, the sum is 188. Multiply the sum by the number that was just called when the board won to get the final score. To guarantee victory against the giant squid, figure out which board will win first. What will your final score be? if you choose that board yeah okay so figure out which board will win first and then score that board so you've got two sort of functions going on here right is like you know for any given board and the input you know how, which which ball will the board win on and then um given a board and an input what is the score of that board, which is, um, and then multiple, uh, oh, the final score. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to develop a system whereby we input a board, we input it, we give it an input, and then it both figures out, you know, the, the index, right? Which, how soon that board wins. So the board wins on five, you know, the board wins on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. the board wins on nine, it wins on whatever. And then separately has a function to score any given board. And then once we have those operations, we can iterate across all boards, but we've also got to parse these boards from the text into memory, which is going to be the first task. Uh, all righty. Yeah, okay, I'm going to save this to the desktop. Boop, boop, boop. And let's go. So let's make a number four directory. And this is going to be get our template. Oh, we get our input in there. Uh, desktop input into 2020. Uh, 
7.04. Not that text. Okay, we got that. And then high into 2021.04, giant skid uh, one. Okay, we got to parse this input file. So I think first we want to read. We want to read the first the input first, right? So that's just going to be comma separated integers into a list. That's really straightforward. So you open it, right? We're gonna get the the um, we'll call it the balls, <laughs> right? The balls is gonna equal to uh, input file dot read. Uh, uh, well, yeah, for each line. Um, we want to just read one line from the file to start with, actually. So we're going to say a balls equal to input file that read the first line, uh, split on commas. And let's just test that out in the terminal here just to make sure it's correct. Uh, open, uh, we're gonna have to, um, okay, uh, file equals open. And then we're gonna say uh, file.readline.s. Yep, oh, there's a backslash n here. At the end, we would to remove that, I guess. Let's remove the trailing new line. I uh, guess we go, we can Google for that. Remove trailing new line. Strip, ah, uh, strip, right. Okay, so we can strip it first. Uh, let's start again, actually. There we go, strip and then split. And then we'll just integer all of those. Uh, okay, so we'll say, all right, strip, split, in x4, x in. There we go, we got our balls now. All right, so we're gonna be returning the balls and then the boards, all right? So the boards is going to be a list. Uh, it's going to be a three-dimensional array, actually, right? Because it's going to be a list, and each item in the list will be a 2D array. Um, but we can actually just make a board class instead, and then we can just have a list of boards that way. So let's do uh, board. self and then there's going to be the uh do we want to parse there or we want to keep all the parsing in the parse input file um if we do the parsing in the parse input file then this input will be a list of lists here right and if we don't it's just going to be five lines of text i think we'll do the um we'll parse in the parse input file area because that's where we've got the file open, that we can close the file. Oh, I guess, you know, we don't, have, yeah, let's do that. So then let's do the, um, let's do the grid will be a list of lists. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so now we'll get a parse, we'll get the, instead of the parsed input, we'll do the boards. So we won't want to do four line um in input file read right we want to build up um right if we look at the input file here right we want to read one two three four five we want to basically read <clears throat> read a line if it's a new if it's a blank line 
you know, do nothing. And then read five lines. Well, I guess what we can do is we can actually say, read a line. If it's a new line and we have a board in memory, then record that, add that, save that board. If it's a blank line. If it's not a blank line, then split it up and add it to the current board. And then if it's a blank line and we have a board in memory, right, register it. And then at the end, we have, or I guess, or end of file. At end of file, we also register board. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, current board is going to also equal a list like this. So we'll say for line, right? Uh huh. Okay, that's what I got to figure out what it looks like at, if the. So we want to say, uh, you know, if the line is blank. So we have to figure out exactly how, what that looks like when a line is blank. So let's do this. It's just a new line. So terrific. So we can say if line, oh, auto Pepe is not installed. Sure, install it while I'm, okay. So if the line is equal to a new line, then we're gonna register the board, or save the board, we'll just say save the board. Uh, save the current board. Uh, if it exists. Else, add, uh, add the current line to the current board. Okay. Terrific. So, adding the current line to the current board, that should be the easiest part here. Oh. Different terminal. Okay. Um, let's get the next line. Next line dot strip dot split on spaces. It that's what that's gonna look like. So uh current board dot append. We can just say uh, row, row equals uh, line dot strip dot split on spaces in x for x in. Turn them all into integers. Current board dot append the row. Perfect. Uh, and then if it's a new line, then uh boards dot append board current board and then current board gets erased All right we erase the current board so then they'll have a list of board uh objects and then we're going to return that the balls as well as the list of board objects okay so the only thing now is the end of file. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run. Oh, I'm editing uh, yesterday's thing instead of today's. Why is that? Why is the giant squid one not open? All right. Well, let's. Uh, let's copy all this here. And go here. <laughs> why did it not copy? It's a simple copy paste. Why are you messing this up? Copy. 
Paste. There you go. Nope, not that one. What? There we go. And then here we can just re, re undo everything. Get out of here. Okay. We're in the correct file now. Uh, cool. Okay. Grid equals grid. Okay. Split and commas boards, current board. Split them up. Board. Okay, so I want to do is I just want to do this. And we'll run it. We got a problem. What? What's going on? Why is this not working properly? Okay, there we go. We didn't have the launch JSON file to tell us where our syntax error is. Strip, oh, strip dot split. Oh, it's up here. It's this one. we go. Invalid int for x with base 10. Empty st That's interesting. Oh, we can get that out of there. Um. Hmm. What's in the line? Oh, is it that must be the final row? That must be the final line is the empty string. So uh, how do we detect the final line? Oh, because the final line must just be a new line. No, it can't just be a new line because it's... Uh... Let's do this. How do I close this error? It's in my way. Get out of the way. Oh, I guess got to stop the whole thing. The line is an empty string. That must be the end, right? Let's see what's in the um what's in boards at this point. Oh, boards has nothing in it. Why does boards have nothing in it? What's the issue? Is this the very first line after the input that's having the problem? If the line is a new line, append. Oh, I forgot to do this. Uh, if uh, current board All right so if the, if there's no board don't do this so that's important but what is this uh i guess we'll just move the breakpoint up here and do one line at a time and forget this exception thing okay Okay, so the current line is nothing. Okay. So it's not equal to um Okay, so boards is empty. So this must be that first line after the uh, initial line. You know what? Let's just uh, let's just do that <laughs> to skip over any. Okay, continue. Continue, continue, line, line, uh, okay. 
the little int for with base 10. What was the line? Name error line. What? Hold on. What is going on here? Okay. So we read the input line. <clears throat> and our next line is, is our balls. The balls are parsed. Good. Okay. Boards are empty. The current board is empty. Boom. Okay. We read in one line. Oh, it's starting with a space. That's a, oh, but we're splitting on spaces? Oh, do you have to, we have to strip that also, I guess. Oh, no, we are stripping here. Um, we're stripping and then splitting. Uh, okay. Okay, so the current board did get the first row added to it correctly. Okay. And now it's got the second row, yep. Third, four, oh, the third row is the, is the one that messed up. Okay, what's going on in the third row? One, two, three, third row. What's wrong in the third row here? something wrong with it Thirty, fifty-four, eighty, eleven, ten. Mm. what is going on here why well, I can't be getting hung up on this part. <laughs> I got to get to the actual part with the actual problem to solve. Um, okay. What could be wrong? In X for X and Y strip strip. This will do this. Got our line. Yep. Yep, the strip does remove the the all the both sides. Yeah, that works. Okay. Continue. Continue. Okay. Continue again. What the hell? Um, I know what's happening. I understand now. The input here, this seven, right? It's splitting on spaces. So it's actually, tr it's got two list items here, right? One of which is, right? Because it splits here, it splits here, and then it splits again here. And now you've got this empty item because of the splitting, because you have a non, uh, right? So what we actually need to do is, uh, read in two characters at a time explicitly and not use the split function. Um, unless there's a way to do multiple splits, right? Uh, Python split on uh, greedy white space. Greedy split, here we go. Uh, mm -mm. 
Split is a special case. Any white space is supported. Yeah, that's because splitting an arbitrary white space, it has been folded. Let's do it. Let's do some testing with that. So test string is equal to uh, oh, one, two, oh, 10, 20, seven. 34. Oh, we can just do split with no parameter and that's going to that's going to do it. Okay. Oof, too much time on that one. Oh, let's get our breakpoint out of there. All right, so now I think we're just going to have trouble at the end of the file, possibly. Let's see. Oh, no, I think it worked, actually. Let's add back our breakpoint here. Okay, we got our boards. Uh, how many boards? 98 boards. Uh, I think we might need to register the final board because car you can see at the breakpoint there is a current board in in memory here. That's the final board. So at the end, what we want to do is uh, boards dot append board. All right, just at the end. And now we run it and we'll see that we have, oh, took the breakpoint out. And now we'll see that we have 99 boards, a hundred, all hundred boards. Perfect. Got a hundred boards. All right. Now we just need to add functionality to the board class. So the first functionality we want to add is we want to pass in the balls. And we want to return at which point, right, the board has one, right, the index. So um, we need something to do, like, you know, is winner, right? Well, we want to track with the grid somehow which ones have been marked and which ones haven't. So I think what we need is we need some sort of marks um, situation. And I think the marks should be some sort of uh, Cartesian coordinate list, right? So the marks is going to end up looking something like this. Like 1-1 one, one is marked, you know, 2-2 two, two is marked, and so on. And then, you, then we can make an is winner, right, very easily. Def is winner, right? So then this can just look at the, the is winner just will just have to look at the marks and see if there's check all the different five in a row situations of which there's five columns, five rows, and two diagonals. So it just to check all 10 things and say, you know, are there mark, you know, does the, is the, is there, are there five marks that all have the same X? Are there five marks that all have the same Y? Or, are the two diagonal special cases, right? So this will just return a Boolean here. Uh, and then we need the um, uh, check. We need to check a digit, right? Uh, which will just simply, this will simply look at a single number See if that number is in the grid, and if it is, it will add a mark to the marks. Uh, okay. And then we're going to have uh, check input, uh, check all balls, a full set of balls. So this is just going to, this is going to take this and iterate over check it's just going to run check digit for each ball until 
the point at which is winner returns true, right? And then after is winner returns true, it's going to uh, this will be the public function actually. This is going to actually return, right? So this will return both the index, right? So when when it won. Uh, and then it's also going to return the score, but we're going to make a separate score function. It's going to return the index and self.getScore. Okay. And then outside of this, we're going to do the check all boards um, situation. Okay, so let's start with the... Simplest one, check digit. So uh, for x in self dot, uh, for x in range, we already know the range is going to be 5, right? It's a 5 by 5. For y, uh, for y in range 5, if grid x, y equals equals uh, the digit, Then, well, we're gonna actually we're gonna say uh, mark digit self dot marks dot append x y right. So this might iterate through the whole grid and end up doing nothing if it doesn't find a match in the grid for the given digit, but that's fine. Uh, it doesn't need to do anything. It only will do something if we find if we get a hit. Okay. Now, that's real simple. So check all, uh, we'll worry about that later. Let's do the is winner part. Okay. So uh, if the length of self.marks is less than five, right? We can just return false right away. We'll just get that out, right? Because we don't have we don't have enough hits to, to win. Okay. Um, that's just an easy escape to do it, you know, I guess a minuscule performance enhancement, I guess. <laughs> okay, so otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to look for uh, how many marks have the same x value. So for x in range 5, right, so we're going to check all the x's, um, you know, uh, marks in... The, the X is going to be the column, and the Y is going to be the row. So for marks in the row, oh, for, you want to, uh, it's equal to the, if the length of this is all right, so let's just say uh, marks in the row is going to be equal to x uh, going to go through the marks where the first digit is equal to, all right, okay. So, uh, row, yeah. All right, so we're gonna say for each row, so row, we're gonna check row zero, right? We're gonna say, okay, find all the marks where x0 is equal to row, right? And then mark, oh, num marks in row. Like, what well, we can just say if is 5, return true, right? Immediately, as soon as we find a row that's a winner, return true. Uh, and we need this index situation. Uh, 
That's okay. Yeah, this this will know the index, so that's we don't need to do the index part in here. Um, okay, so we'll check all the rows. Then we'll check all the columns. Actually, we can just do the column check also in the same in the same part because there's five and five. So we can do if the length uh, x and x square uh, to check a column. Yeah, so we're checking the x values and then the y values. I guess they're not all rows, but we'll just <laughs> if we're right. Okay, so if you find a winner on a row, you know we're the first, you know the x value, right? The first half, and then this, this is. Uh, let's we can do this actually. This will make it. Turn true, cool. You may see this is this is filtering, right? This this list comprehension is filtering the marks, right, to uh, with to a particular set and seeing if that set of marks, if there are five marks in that set, then you um, have a winner, right? So now the diagonal ones, so the diagonal ones had to be separate, so we had just had to do them two on their own, so. Uh, we're going to say left diagonal is going to be equal to, nope, uh, left diagonal. So the left diagonal is 0, 0, 1, 1. Ah, we're seeing a pattern. That's good. We can code this. 3, 3. Four, four, five, five. Okay, so we know, oh, it's, it's just to four. Um, so what's the right diagonal, though? The, the first diagonal has an easy pattern. We, uh, we're going to be able to, to handle that pattern. Uh, but the right diagonal is going to be zero, five, one. Oh, no, it's going to be zero, four, right? Yes, zero four, one, three, two two, the middle. Three uh three one and four zero. So I don't know if there's a there's is there might be a pattern here to this one. Um but I'm not seeing it immediately. But for the left diagonal, we can do this again. We can say if length of uh, x uh, for marks, uh, mark for mark in marks, where uh, mark, oh, not where, if. I'm I'm the SQL on the brain here. If mark zero is equal to mark one equals five. See, so this is taking care of this pattern. It's basically saying, hey, filter the list of marks to where mark zero and mark one are equal. And then if you have five items, then you've got a winner. Um, so actually let's, this will make this clear to do it, to do it the same way. Yep. So here we're checking, you know, oh, it's self dot marks. That's why. Okay, so now we got to do the right diagonal. So we're just gonna have to do a. No, we can actually plot. That doesn't go in the in the loop. It stays out because it's a single. It's a single check. So now we've got our right diagonal, and now that we have the right diagonal, we can do the same thing. 
Uh, let's just make this correct. Okay. So if the length mark for mark and self dot marks if mark in right diagonal. So we're we're still filtering. We're still doing a filter, but our filter isn't instead of just being based on some number, it's going to be hard coded, hard coded filter. Say, is it any are, are any of the, are, is this exact set marked? <laughs> um, all right, if there are, are there five items in this set that have been marked? If so, return true. Okay, so that's our is winner function. Terrific. Um, this is taking a little while, but I think this is good. I think part my guess is that coding all this will make part two easier. So I, I'm feeling a good about part two, and I, I don't dislike the code I'm writing today, even though it's taken a while. Okay, so now we've got to mark all the digits. So let's do that. So for ball in balls, uh, we're going to mark digit. Uh, ball, mark the ball, and then if is winner, let's enumerate the balls. So if is winner, there you go. Return index, self to get score. And I guess, is it possible for a ball to never win? I'm going to assume that in this input, right, this is going to, uh, what's the length of this input here? Let's just figure that out. Oh, we got a problem up here. The length of the balls is 100. Yep, so I think every single number is getting called. So you're, you're going to be a winner eventually. Every single board will eventually win because we're emptying the whole, the whole bingo. So uh, we don't need to... Um, I worry about that. Okay, so the score is going to be, they said, let's go back. The score function is going to have something to it. The score can now be calculated. It's the sum of all unmarked numbers on that board. In this case, the sum is 188. So sum the unmarked numbers. So we're going to iterate through the whole board. And for each stop on the board, we're going to check the marks and say, is this current stop on the board marked? If not, add it to our sum. And then we're going to multiply that sum by the number that was just called when the board was one. So to get the final score, so we actually need to, the index, the index has to be known by the score function. The index and the, the balls have to be known by the score function. Um, so we actually have to get the score. So if is winner, we know the current ball. So we could just pass the ball in here, right? So this is the winning, this is the winning ball. All right, so now the score function knows which ball was just called at the winning moment. Uh, and we just need to sum the unmarked balls. So for x in range five, right? So this uh, the ball sum, well, I guess the uh, the unmarked sum. Okay, for x in range five, for y in range five. Um, if x comma y not in marks, right? Then grid, oh, then unmarked sum x, y, 
Oh, no, it's going to be just uh, unmarked sum plus equals. Okay. So basically, go through the whole grid. If that spot on the grid is not marked, then add the value at that spot on the grid to the unmarked sum. And then we're going to return the unmarked sum times the winning ball. And that's your score. Perfect. So I think we've got all the pieces we need here. Uh, we got seven problems, though. Let's figure out our problems. Oh, I hate the, the keyboard shortcuts on this. Uh, grid. If grid, uh, self dot grid. Undefined name winning ball. Check all balls. Get score. Oh, it's going to be called ball. Okay. Boop. Perfect. We cleared our problems. Um, okay, so now to actually solve the puzzle, right? We need to guarantee which board will win first and what's the score if you choose that board. So we're going to do uh, score all boards. And we're going to have um, the boards. And we're going to need the balls on the boards. Balls, boards. Uh, yeah. Because we're getting, this is going to be the list of boards, right? So uh, parse input file here. Down here, we're going to be like, you know, uh, we want to return which board will wins first and what's its score. So winning ball, oh, winning board score equals score all boards. Um, Oh, the parsed input is returning the balls and the boards. So, balls, boards. Balls, boards. I actually think we should do this instead. Uh, we'll see. But I'm thinking score all boards should just return the scores and indexes of all the boards. And then we should have a separate function to um, uh, actually figure out which of the boards was the winner, right? So uh, board scores. And then we'll have find winning board. Board scores. Okay. Cool. It's in the port one where we find winning board, board scores. Great. Okay, so score all the boards. So for uh Board in boards. Uh, we're going to do check all the balls. Okay, we're going to say uh, index score equals, right? Then we're going to say uh, board scores. Just in case, uh, well, it's a it's the winning index, 
right? And then the actual index. So there's the board index. So the board index is basically which board is it? Board number five, board number 10, board is 100 boards, right? Board number 50. The winning index is, okay, which, um, right, which uh, ball did that board win on? It won on board ball one, ball two, ball three, et cetera. So each board score uh, is going to be the board index, right? The winning index, and then the actual score. So then down here, if we have board scores, right, we want to find the one with the minimum winning index. So we want to sort by the, what do we got going on here? Oh. I really don't like the keyboard shortcut there. I keep typing in that filter box when I shouldn't. And I keep having to use the mouse in this zone. I'll, I'll figure out eventually. Um, I'll figure out the keyboard shortcuts for the problem area <laughs> at some point. Okay. So find the winning board. So current winner equals none, right? Okay. Well, the current winner, it could be, we could start it as like a thousand, right? We could do this because we know there's only a hundred boards and it, right? So we can actually, it could be even be 101 and it would work the same. Um, well, let's just do none. Uh, and the current winning index could be a thousand. Let's do that. Okay. So then for, uh, board index winning index score in board scores. Uh, if the winning index is less than the current winning index, I don't know. It doesn't. I don't think it's possible for two boards to tie because they didn't mention that in the input here. Tie, draw, draw numbers, drawn, after the six is drawn, 24 is drawn, after drawn numbers. Yeah, so I don't think there can be a tie, so you don't have to worry about that. I guess if there's a tie, we can go by score <laughs> if necessary. Uh, we'll see if a tie happens. I don't think it will. Uh, but if it does, with the way we've written the code, it won't be an issue trying to fix it. So if the winning index is less than the current, winner is equal to right the board index the winning we'll rebuild the board score and the current winning index is equal to the winner trying to current winner Okay, so we'll go through all the boards, score them, right? Find the one with the lowest winning index, right? That's the winner. And then return it. So now down here, we score all the boards. We find the winning board. Oh, winning board. And then the part one result is actually the winning board one. Um, I guess we can say winning, oh, winning, the winning board index, right? So which board was it? Uh, what was its uh, index and its score? So the part one result is gonna be equal to the score, right? Uh, okay. This might just work. Uh, do we leave any breakpoints lying around? We did. This could just work right out of the gate. Let's see what happens. 
We got errors, of course. Board scores. Dot, uh, I see what's happening here. I, I'm appending three things. I need to do this. Okay. Let's do that again. 11360. You know what? I'm going to type it in. That's not the right answer. It's too low. Okay. Let's figure where we went wrong. Uh, so we went wrong somewhere. Kind of had to start a debugging. So let's start by checking our... Uh, it's actually harder to debug if it didn't error. <laughs> it just returned a number. Uh, that's, is that the input that we wanted? Oh, I think we we didn't multiply. We just got the sum. We have to multiply it times the... Uh, did we multiply it? Oh, 11,360. We must have multiplied it to get a number that big. The sum on its own isn't going to be that big there. Score, score, get score, ball... Get score. Yeah, we are we are multiplying here. Oh, but wait. Winning ball. Winning ball. Check all balls. Enumerate balls. Yeah, okay, so that is going to be the ball. That's not the problem. Okay. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's start on the, the outside portion. Let's make sure that um, the find winning board is correct and work our way inwards. Let's do that. Okay, get this out of here, get this out of here. All right, let's look at the board scores. Okay, so we got Oh, the board scores don't seem to have these indexes set correctly. That's why. Right? These indexes here are, right? We've got the indexes of the board, but the winning indexes are not correct on the board scores. So you found our problem right away. Let's figure out why the winning indexes are not correct. Uh huh. So the board scores come from score all boards, so the problem must be in score all boards. The winning index comes from check all balls. So check all balls for index ball in enumerate balls. Mark the digit ball if is winner. Huh, something's going on here. Did I leave any other breakpoints? No. All right, let's see what's going on. Okay, so we're checking all balls. Okay, we've got ourselves a board. You can delete this. Um, we have here the balls. We got an index. And we got a ball. And we got self.board. Oh, self.grid, self.grid. So here's our grid. And we got our marks. Go away. Okay, we got no marks. And we're going to check the balls. Okay, so let's continue. So that was ball number, I guess, 10. Oh, we haven't even checked yet. Okay, so boom. Um, the grid is the same index and ball. We're not getting. Okay, here we go. So index zero, ball 10. Correct. All right, we're going through the balls and we haven't marked anything. There's no 10 in the grid. Continue. Okay. 
Uh, is there an 80? Oh. Oh, we get to mark the digit still. Yep. Okay. The grid keeps uh, shifting here. Uh, what's up with that? Oh, is is winner wrong? I think is winner is wrong. Is winner is just returning true um, immediately. That's what's happening. Right? The is winner has a problem. That's why we're not seeing any marks get marked. Let's check the is winner. Is winner is not even getting called? What? Ah, here's the problem. <laughs> self dot is I forgot the parentheses in the is winner. It's like yes, there is a function named self dot is winner, but now we're actually gonna call it. <laughs> okay, problem averted. Hey, okay, let's get rid of this breakpoint. Aha. You can't compare list and int. Ah, this is why. Okay. Continue. Here we go. 39984. That's the right answer. We got there. We found the bug. We found the bug. It wasn't actually a bug in our logic or anything. It was just a little typo. We forgot the parentheses after the is winner. Let's go on to part two. Okay. So after the puzzle is complete, provides one goal, sir. It might be wise to try a different strategy. Let the squid win. <laughs> Your aren't sure how many bingo boards a giant squid can play at once. Oh, crap. That's right. <laughs> Waste time continuing. Figure out which board will win last and choose that one. That way, no matter which board it picks, it will win for sure. It's a good thing. This is going to be easy now that we coded part one in the way we did. Finding the losing board is going to be really easy. The second board is the last to win, which happens after 13 is called. If you're able to keep playing, the second board would have a sum of unmarked numbers and final score. Right, So we just get the score of the, the last. Feature which board will win last and what's its score. Really, this is going to take two seconds because of all the work we've done in part one. Right? We just have to replace find winning board with find losing board. That's all we got to do. Boom. Let's copy and paste this. Find losing board, right? Uh, the current winning index. So we want to do uh, current loser. Current losing index is going to be uh, start at zero, actually. Find, so we're finding the... Well, it's still going to be the w winning, I guess, losing index. It's hard to say because this is the winning index. It's the index at which the board wins. But we want to find uh, right, the current losing index. So we're just going to switch it to a greater than here. right? And we're going to say, hey. Look, you know, for each, for all the boards and all the boards, or for all the board scores, good thing we scored all the boards, right? If w the time at which that board wins is worse than this, worse than zero, right? Make that the current loser. Like that. Um, right, because it's still a winning index. But yeah, but if it's worse than the board than all the boards we found already, then take that board, put it in this slot, and then uh put the number, the index for that board, put it in this slot. Keep looking for worse ones, and when we get to the end, we we know that this board is the worst available board. Return it. 
So now we've got find. Oh, you know what we should do? We should. Um, this is what, hold on. Forgot to make a second file for part two. All right, so then, uh, so part two should have everything in it, including find losing board. So we'll just undo this. We didn't change anything else besides that, I think, in the part one. Yeah. So now we can close you. We can close you also. We'll just focus on the find losing board. Okay. And then I go down here. We actually, see, look at this. We don't even have to score the boards again. We score them once, and then we just find the winner, find the loser, right? I think this is just going to work. 945. It's not the right answer. It's too low. Interesting. What's wrong? We had find the winning board, and it works. Find the losing board does not work. Which board will win last once it wins? What will its score be? So what's wrong with find losing board? The problem has to be in here. Um, so for each board index, winning index score in board scores, if, so we got the same board scores, okay? So if the index at which that board wins is worse than zero, which it's going to be right away, then the current loser is equal to the whole thing. And the current losing index is going to be equal to that number and then return the current loser. Why is this not right? I can't actually, I can't see anything wrong with this. Um, hmm. I don't see anything wrong with this at all. Hmm. Board index score. Part two result. It's printing a different number. It's got a lower score because a losing board is gonna have to is gonna go longer, right? So it's gonna mark off more spaces, and in marking off more spaces, it's going to um have a lower score because your score is the sum of your unmarked spots, right? Uh, all the turn. All right, we'll take. Let's take a look at our board scores. So we'll go to a get. Go here. Let's take a look at our board scores by hand. Yeah, here's our board scores. So let's see which one has the worst index. There's an 80. 80 is pretty bad, right? Is there anything worse than 80? There's an 83. So that must be the one. Uh... This must be the one, this 945 that's showing up. Okay, nothing's worse than 83. Hmm. Okay. 945, okay, so something must be wrong with the board score um itself that in a way that uh one some boards are right and some boards are wrong 
So it could be that the that there's something wrong with the with one of the winning methods, right? So like maybe you know the 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 winning the the winning best board, right, was able to be just think about it. Imagine that like this one is working and this one is broken and these are broken. If the winning board won in this way, it would still be the winner. Um but if say that losing board is like maybe it actually wins earlier on a right diagonal or a left diagonal. Uh, right, so I think the is winner again is going to be our problem. That that board, that eighty three board, should be winning earlier, but it's not, and therefore it's showing up as a loser. Even though, right? So let's go into here and check our winning methods. Oh, is it something to do with this? No, no, it's not something to do with that. Because if you have, if you don't have five marks, you you can't win. So you're not a winner yet. All right? Because we're calling is winner and a loop here. So, okay. Okay, so let's just do this. Um, all right. So we can see that the at this point. Uh, the marks, we have five marks, uh, and mark, all right, so let's do uh, mark for mark in self marks if mark zero equals one. Well, uh, currently, let's just go to the next line. Step is it step into step step over, step over, great. So row zero. Okay, the list comprehension uh, is hidden from us. Okay, so now we're doing row run row one, row two, row three. Yeah, row four, row five. Okay. Oh uh, wait, we missed that one, but. It's not winning on the right diagonal, right? Mark for mark and self dot marks if mark is in right diagonal. Let's get in let's get into there. No, we can't. Because I made list comprehensions, it's it's harder to debug inside of them. Uh, okay, let's do this. Um, I think these ones are right. It might be this one. Oh, well, maybe not. This one seems right also. All right, so the center, the center one is filled on this one. You can see that, right? Uh, and the length is one. So I think this one's actually correct. It might be the right diagonal that's wrong. So zero four. Oh, I noticed none of these. Oh, okay, zero. So two zero. Yeah. So the right diagonal. So it's zero zero one one two two three three four four. So this is two two, and the opposite of one one is going to be two three one three. Yep, and therefore three three is going to be three one four zero and zero four, and that makes you the right the right diagonal. 
That seems right. Or okay, maybe that's actually the, you know, that's the right diagonal. Hmm. If Mark is in the right diagonal, okay. Is the issue in here? Um. Hmm. Maybe what we can do is we can print out like how, right? We can print out how each one won and we can see if anything's missing. So we can say, uh, uh, this is horizontal. Vertical, left diag, right diag. All right, and then let's see how they all, which ones happen and which ones don't happen. Oh, parent. <laughs> Man, I thought part two was gonna be done in like two seconds. We did such a good job in part one. I thought this would just work. We got a bug somewhere. The right diag is missing. Oh, no, there it is. Left diag, right diag, vert, horizontal, left diag. Okay. So we have all different kinds of winners. Did I type it in wrong? No, nope, that's not the right answer. I didn't type it in wrong. Maybe I, maybe, maybe I read something wrong. In the above example, the second board is the last to win, which happens after 13 is eventually called, yeah, and its middle column is completely marked. If we were to keep playing until this point, the second board would have a sum of mar unmarked numbers equal to 148 for a final score of 148 times 13. Which board will win last? What would, all right, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong in terms of reading. We're getting all different kinds of winners. So it could just be that some of these are incorrect. Um, so how about this? We're gonna we're gonna um, we'll print horizontal, but we'll also print self dot marks for each one to see what they look like. Make sure that they're correct. Okay. So these are the marks at the point at which they won. So this one's a horizontal winner. Um, it's a horizontal winner on, I guess we should have done, for these, we should have done a uh, row. So we know which row they won on. Okay, so now we know which row they won on. Cool. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this one, one on row zero. It's got zero three, zero four, zero zero, zero one, and zero two. Yep, so that seems right. So the horizontal seems correct. Vertical, so one on vertical one, zero one, one one, two one, three one, four one. So that, yep. So that one vertical is correct. Right diag. Okay. So right diag should have uh, 0, 4, 
zero four. One, one, three. Uh, oh, is there maybe something like a free space that we missed? Um, was, you know, the middle free space? No, middle not free space. Okay, that's not it. Oh, I'm doing diagonal, but I don't need to do diagonal. Is that the issue? You can't win on a diagonal? You can only win horizontal? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, reading, a reading. I bet if I remove the horizontal and the, the, the diagonal wins. Not my fault you don't know how to play bingo, advent of code maker person, okay? You can win on a freaking diagonal here. Um, diagonals don't count. Uh, I did all that effort for my diagonals. Uh, it's not, listen, you don't know how to play bingo, okay? Okay. Well, if anyone's out there watching this, now you know read more carefully, but also, um, uh, we can get rid of these prints here and these breaks. Okay. Get rid of our diagonals and eight, four, six, eight. That's the right answer. Okay. We wasted time because of a reading uh, problem. But I, I'm very satisfied with the work we did today. We'll be back tomorrow.